Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Swiss, uh, talking college basketball Tuesday here. I'm actually recording this before Monday night's NBA, so I don't know how I did on Monday night yet, but uh, I had a great weekend. Well, I had a bad uh, Friday night, but I had a great Saturday, great Sunday, so hopefully the positivity continues. Going through four games for Tuesday college basketball. Let's go. Welcome to The Swiss. Get the Suez. We're going to start off in the SEC. We got South Carolina on the road at Tennessee. Um, Vols are laying 13 and a half points at home with the total sitting at 136 and a half. First thing that jumps out at me here is we're looking at two teams that run complete opposite paces. Uh, Tennessee likes to push the tempo. South Carolina might not be comfortable with that. They run a slower paced game. Um, Tennessee also the significant defensive advantage, especially at home. South Carolina does come into this one on a three game win streak. Uh, last two of them were at home. This one's obviously on the road. South Carolina three and two in true road games this year. So the Gamecocks have shown us they're capable of going on the road and winning games. The problem is if you look at South Carolina's numbers on the road as a whole for the whole season, these shooting numbers are bad. 323rd in field goal percentage, 230th in three-point percentage on the road this year. And that's kind of terrifying considering, like I said, Tennessee's defense at home has been out of this world. Uh, on the season, they are second in the nation in overall defensive rating at home. But if you isolate South Carolina's shooting numbers and just look at the last five games, they really don't look that bad. Now, just two of the last five games have been on the road, but they won both of those games. Uh, so the bad shooting numbers for South Carolina on the road really come from their like a month ago, early in January. In the last five games, South Carolina's 129th in EFG, 70th in offensive rebounding rate, 102nd in free throw rate. I mean, not that these numbers are elite, but they're not nearly as bad as the, the offensive numbers we were seeing from South Carolina if you look at their road numbers for the whole year. Plus, did you see those offensive rebounding numbers in the last five games for South Carolina? 70th in the country. South Carolina may get some second chance points in this one. Defensive rebounding is not the strength of Tennessee. As a whole, I think this South Carolina offense might be slightly undervalued. And I know everyone's terrified of the Vols defense at home in Knoxville, but I don't think it's crazy to think South Carolina scores some points in this game. But we do have to look at the other side of the ball. And we also have to take into account that Tennessee's a perfect 10 and 0 at home this season. Uh, and if you look at the last five games for Tennessee, yeah, we made the point that South Carolina could get active on the offensive glass and get some second chance points, but you can see the same thing on the other side of the ball for Tennessee. Uh, you can see South Carolina deep, uh, South Carolina's defensive rebounding numbers not quite as good as their offensive rebounding numbers. As we know, Tennessee's offense lives and dies by connect. I mean, this kid's going nuts. In his last five games, he's averaging 32 points per game, six rebounds per game, shooting 47% from three. I mean, kid's playing on another planet right now. But the question is, is it enough to cover a 13 and a half point spread? Um, and I mean, I don't really love this game if I'm being honest, but I love fading offenses as a whole that rely on one player and Tennessee's just been riding this dude's hot streak. Their offense is super reliant on, on connect. So if his outside shots aren't falling at a crazy rate for him, I think South Carolina keeps it close. So I'll see South Carolina plus 13 and a half for a pass. Uh, we'll go through this one on the live show tomorrow at 4 p.m. Next game. Big 12 is up next. We got Texas Tech on the road at TCU. Uh, Horn Frogs laying five points at home or four and a half, depending on your sports book. Total sitting at 149 and a half. Just like last game, we're looking at another matchup between two teams that run complete opposite paces. Uh, TCU likes to push the tempo. Texas Tech likes to play slow half court basketball. Both are top 35 in offensive rating, so these are two very good offenses. TCU definitely has the significant defensive advantage, though. But again, I mean, look at the pace. I mean, this is night and day difference. So we'll start by taking a look at Texas Tech's numbers on the road. And I mean, kind of a good news, bad news here. Um, so they've been great offensively. They're third in EFG, first in three-point percentage. Red Raiders have had no problem getting their shots to fall on the road this year. And if you look at the numbers from the last 10 games... Uh, no question, Texas Tech's offense has been significantly better than TCU's defense. Uh, 18th in the EFG, TCU's defense back at 150, uh, 152nd. And normally, Texas Tech wouldn't get many opportunities as far as second chance points, but TCU's defensive rebounding numbers just don't look good. Red Raiders offense should be a problem in this one. They should score points. But on the other side of the ball, no question, the edge goes back over to TCU because Texas Tech's defensive numbers on the road are absolute piss. 361st in defensive rating in their four true road games. I mean, four road games isn't a huge sample size, but 361st is wild. And look at Texas Tech's defensive numbers in the last five games. I mean, I know this team is ranked in the top 25, but in the last five games, 
110th in EFG, 332nd in RRB. I mean, they are forcing turnovers, so we'll give them a little bit of credit, but as a whole, this defense has not been good. And if you look at TCU's offensive numbers in that same span the last five games, uh, no question these field goal percentage numbers should really be terrifying for Texas Tech. If we take a look at the shot zones in this side of the ball, I mean, there's almost nowhere where TCU can't score. Seems like they should be able to do whatever they want on offense. Uh, long story short, TCU should put up a big number here on Texas Tech. And then you add in the fact that TCU's 9-1 at home this year, their only loss being to a really good Iowa State team. I, I like TCU here. I'm a little worried that they're coming off a triple overtime game. It was just a couple days ago, but... Texas Tech is just coming off an upset win on the road a couple days ago themselves uh, over Oklahoma. So I'm going to lay them. Give me TCU minus four and a half next game. Big East basketball up next. We got Marquette on the road in Philly to play Villanova. This line is a pick em. As I'm recording this, we're seeing pretty much even minus 110s across the board on both sides. Uh, total sitting at 142. So we got Marquette coming into this game, coming off back-to-back -back blowout wins. Um, the one Saturday was over Seton Hall without Kadari Richmond, which is huge because he's by far their best player. And the one before that was against DePaul. It was right after they fired their coach. So yeah, back-to-back -back blowout wins. Let's give a nice little thumbs up to Marquette, but it's basically against nobody. Uh, so you would think on the road in Villanova should be a giant step up in competition for Marquette. But here's where it gets a little tricky because Villanova's kind of looked like shit recently. Uh, Marquette should have the significant advantage on both the offensive and defensive sides of the court, or on paper at least. In the last five games, Villanova's one and four, including four straight losses. Marquette's four and one with a relatively similar strength of schedule. So no question this Villanova team's been struggling. But when we look at shooting zones here, uh, no question, Marquette should be able to score points on the interior. They should be able to get inside the paint and score. Marquette does take a good amount of outside shots, and that actually plays into the strength of Villanova's defense. Not that Villanova's defense has been good, but if there is one strength of the Nova defense recently, it's been defending the outside shot. So, I, look, Villanova's defense is, is not good by any means, but I do think they can limit the three-point shots for Marquette. They're 74th in EFG in the last five games, and they're not turning the ball over. So the Villanova offense has actually been strong. I know you can't really tell by looking at the game logs, but they've been scoring points. And I think this Marquette defense might be really overvalued right now. Yeah, they're four and one in their last five games, but the defense hasn't quite been the same. So in their first 15 games of the year, Marquette gave up 70 plus points just four times. They've given up 70 plus points in four of their last five. And the one game they didn't was Saturday against Seton Hall minus Kadari Richmond, who's by far their most important piece. And not to mention this Villanova team went on the road to Marquette and scored 74 in the 87-74 loss. So Villanova was able to score points on them even though they got beat by double digits. Not gonna lie, this feels like a bit of a sell high spot for Marquette. Uh, this is ugly. <laughs> this is really ugly, but I'm going to play Villanova here. I'm going to play Nova on the money line in a much needed bounce back win at home next game. Let's talk Big 12. We got Oklahoma on the road at Kansas State here. Uh, Wildcats laying a point and a half at home and the total sitting at 137. This is definitely a tough one to get a read on. Uh, obviously, the Kansas State offense has been pretty awful, but the defense has been able to keep them in games. And if we look at numbers from the last five games, we're, we're kind of looking at the same story for both these teams. Um, neither of these teams are playing their best basketball right now. In fact, it kind of looks like both these teams are trending downward. We know Oklahoma's coming into this game off a terrible week, losing two home games, one to Texas and one to Texas Tech. They were favored in both those games. Uh, Oklahoma's now lost four of their last six overall. If you look at the shot chart here, I mean, there's just nowhere where Oklahoma's shooting the ball well. Um, they take a lot of shots at the rim, which I guess has been one of the weaker spots for Kansas State defensively. I mean, it's just, it's really hard to trust the Sooner offense right now. But when we flip things around and look at Kansas State, I mean, it's the same story, just an ugly offense coming off an absolute blowout loss on the road in Houston. Uh, before that, they lost another decisive game uh, that was on the road at Iowa State. Uh, so they've lost two in a row themselves. And kind of the same story here in a sense where this, the offense is just terrible. They aren't getting second chance opportunities. They're turning the ball over at a crazy rate. I mean, luckily for Kansas State, this Oklahoma defense has been pretty awful at limiting opponents field goal percentage. Uh, they also don't force turnovers. So I could be a nice spot for Kansas State's offense to finally show up. Um, however, no question, Oklahoma's gonna have the serious rebounding edge. So I know it's tough to take Kansas State as a favorite in a game that we almost know they're gonna get beat on the glass, but this Oklahoma offense has just looked so bad. I'm gonna need more than a point and a half to take Oklahoma uh, on the road where they've been less reliable all year. 
Um, going with the Wildcats in this one. Kansas State minus one and a half. If you want my top bets for all sports parlays of the day or you want to join our Discord, head over to kylekerms.com. The link's right there on the homepage. Um, college Basketball Tuesday. Let's get this week started off properly. Remember to bet responsibly, and I'll talk to you in the Discord.